you've just heard some of the important work that is going on here right now at Emmanuel Episcopal Church. On May 2nd, 2021, two organ builders from the C.B. Fisk shop in Gloucester, Massachusetts arrived to do the important work of voicing the four new flu stops that have been installed this year. For the past nine days, they have been busy listening, making small adjustments to each and every pipe of these new additions to make them sing in this glorious space. Let's go and meet our organ builders and discover what it is that they are doing. Good afternoon. I'm so pleased to have with us one of our organ builders from the Fisk Organ Company in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, give us a little bit about your, your background and uh, how you came to Fisk. Yes, I'm Kate Harrington and <clears throat> I work, started working at Fisk in 2014. And before that, I spent a few years working at Taylor Booty Organ Builders in Virginia. I'm from Stanton, Virginia, where that firm is located, and I grew up around choral music and hearing great organs and uh, studied music in college, studied voice, and um, got interested in building organs after college. So that's kind of how I got started. That's terrific. Um, what kinds of things do you do at the Fisk shop? So primarily I'm a metal pipe maker. And um, I have an organ, a, a pipe order right here. So. <laughs> and that's for this organ, I'm that's, assuming. Yes, it? that's for this organ. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so this is part of what I'm given as uh, my instructions for what kind of pipes are needed and the specifications of each pipe. Um, so, yes, I, I, from scratch, will take. Uh, flat metal that we've cast and mold it and shape it and solder it together and make make pipes that look like this. <laughs> so what is that pipe order that you have in your hand for? This is for the stuff that we're working on now. We're voicing it. Um, it's the plein jeu in the swell. It's a mixture, which means that there are uh, four different ranks in the mixture. So what kinds of things are on the specification sheet that you have there? What kinds of things, what kind of information is, is important on that sheet for you? Yeah, so the, it will tell us the shape of the mouth, whether it's overshot or not. So the, the placement of the upper and lower lip in relation to each other. Mm -hmm. The angle of the languid, mm -hmm. which is the, the middle piece of metal that creates a windway. We have the size of the windway here. We have the German names too. <laughs> um, so we know that those are the, the, the specifications to construct each pipe according to these. Uh, the windway, the cutups, the toe holes, foot length, the type of ears, um, the type of mouths, the type of metal, uh, thickness of the metal, um, on and on. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really interesting. So do you have um, specific details for each and every pipe, or is that something you have to determine off of this order, you know, by your own artistry? Um, we determine it sort of, it, it'll be consistent throughout a, a range of pipes, and if it's not, then it'll be um, noted on the, on the order. So it, it's general mm -hmm. for the whole stop mm -hmm. um, unless there's something that needs to be different. Mm -hmm. Now what's interesting to me, I've never thought about the languid having a, a, a degree to it or a tilt or, or you know, uh, incline. What kind of degrees are we talking about? What's, what's kind of the range you might work in there? Yeah, so these are 70 degrees and it's it's referring to the front face of the 
okay. the language. Yeah. You'll see me pointing to my face because an organ pipe is like a, a face in a lot of ways. It has an upper lip, a lower lip, and a language, which is like a tongue. Um, but the languid, the front facing plane of it, mm -hmm. um, we could have 45 degrees mm -hmm. up to 70 degrees mm -hmm. and maybe more than that. Does that affect the speed of the speech? Yes. I see. Okay. Oh, that's terrific. That's yeah. really terrific. So tell us uh, more about what your role here at Emanuel has been, not only the past 10 days or so, but also historically when the organ was installed in 2015, 2016. Yes, I was on the installation crew back then and um, we set up the whole organ, we brought everything in from Gloucester, Massachusetts and um, put it all together here, which took, I guess, about two weeks. Um, and we took our, we brought our front pipes here, the facade pipes, and came, they were covered in their coating of size, which we painted on as a protective coating, but when we got them here, we washed that off, we polished it, polished them, and we lifted them up into the organ. Now, if I, memory serves me, you had a hand in making these facade yeah. pipes, is that true? What what parts of the facade pipes did you make? Do you remember? I, yeah, specifically, this was the first set of facade pipes where I made the insoldered upper lips. Okay. So I, the, the space was cut out before I got to it, uh -huh. um, but I shaped the sort of the bay leaf shape, the, the, um, the arch. Yeah, the I, I think of it as like a teardrop or something. Yeah. yeah so it's the upper part of it, huh? Yeah, we call yes. that a gothic um, mouth. A shape. gothic mouth. Yeah. Okay. Or a bay leaf. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I shaped the point and I, was able to solder the piece into it. It's also thicker than the surrounding metal, uh -huh. for, partly for the voicing I see. and the structure. Is the metal the same composition of metal? Yeah. It is, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is- This is lead. Hammered lead, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, but I guess maybe that piece, is that piece that you were talking about, is that hammered or not? It looks yeah. like it's, it is Yeah, hammered. it's all hammered. It's all hammered, okay, wow. Oh, fantastic. And it was a collaboration. I think I also put the ears on mm -hmm. each one. Yeah. Oh, that's tremendous. So. And then this past uh, week or so, your role has been, uh, what exactly? Yeah, so I, um, my partner David is in the organ most of the time, and he's listening to each individual pipe and working on it. But my role is to sit at the keyboard and listen from here test each one after he's finished working on it um, and tell him, report back what I hear and to listen and, and see if the, <clears throat> if the compass is evenly distributed in terms of volume and um, sort of the brightness or the darkness, the color of each tone and if it's a good progression from low pitches to high pitches and nothing sticks out to us and it's all working well together with everything else so that's partly my role and then if he'll later on he'll go out into the church as I sit here and play for him to listen oh, well, that's tremendous well that's a very important job you are the ears <laughs> no pressure <laughs> no pressure well we are so delighted to have you with us again and return and uh, be part of the craftsmen and women who have uh, created this just incredible instrument that we are so blessed to have here at Emmanuel Episcopal Church. Uh, and for our viewers, I, we were very delighted to get to celebrate Kate's 33rd birthday with her <laughs> on Friday. So uh, we're so pleased that you, were, <laughs> that you were with us uh, here and uh, we wish you the very, very best. Thank you. I hope that I'll be able to come back soon. Yep, here play. We have a few more stops to go, so yeah, right. the <laughs> odds are in your favor. <laughs> All right, thanks, Kate. Thank you. Now, here we are up in the swell division of Opus 145, and I am so pleased to introduce to all of you uh, David Pike, and 
He has been here for the past oh, nine or 10 days, working very diligently on the voicing process of the organ. So David, if you could introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your history and background and let us know what, what is it you've been doing here? Sure. Um, I have worked at CB Fisk in one capacity or another now for 45 years. I came to Fisk in 1976, essentially straight out of music school. I had just graduated from the Eastman School of Music in Rochester, New York, with a degree in music theory, um, emphasis in pipe organ, having previously studied a little trumpet there as well. Um, at first, I worked in the cabinet making shop at Fisk, did a full apprenticeship there. And uh, by my fifth year, Charles Fisk invited me to start learning to voice pipes. So I, I learned voicing from Charlie, from Barbara Owen, who's basically the goddess of the organ building <laughs> world, and from Steve Coalition, who is a, a, a good friend and has been a colleague ever since I started at Fisk. Uh, this week, Kate and I have been here doing the finish voicing on four new flu stops that we've been able to install in the organ. The Great Solitional, the Solitional is a string stop. The Great Four Foot Flute, the Swell Flute Celeste, and right now the Swell Plangeur, which is a mixture. So, um, we're kind of maybe two thirds of the way through with the mixture. The mixture has 232 pipes wow. in it. The longest pipe is two feet long. The shortest pipe is three quarters of an inch speaking <laughs> length. So uh, a lot of dog whistles to voice in, yeah, yeah. in this stop. So we've been going through one rank at a time in this mixture, listening and adjusting for as Kate mentioned, for brightness and volume and speech quality, um, with the hope that, that it will blend well with itself and with the eight and four foot foundations in this well. This will be a bright mixture, brighter than the great mixture. Um, it will really sit as a crown on top of the, the chorus of the great. So that's our goal. Um, it's, um, as you can imagine, a tedious process, um, but necessary. So, oh, yeah. 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 So what kinds of, of tools or things do you do to uh, voice the, 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 the individual pipes? And we're looking at the mixture, so I, I suppose that's the yeah. thing we should discuss. Yeah, sure. Well, this is a typical mixture pipe. This is a rank of the two foot, or a pipe of the two foot rank, mm -hmm. um, D1. So it's just under a half a foot long or under six inches long. The body is made of tin. The foot, you can tell, is a different color. The mm. tin is actually hammered lead. Oh. Uh, 90, or, yeah, 98 and a half percent pure lead. So the foot is pure, 98 percent pure lead. Just about 100 percent pure wow. lead. And then the body is? Is 75 percent tin, 25 wow. percent lead. Wow. And, and that has been hammered too. The metal was hammered. Yeah, is there is this a, a Fisk thing or is this a, a historical uh, precedent? Or I, I have very little knowledge of this, and so I'm well, curious. If, if you go back and look at some of the older organs in Europe, in mm -hmm. Germany and France, typically they will make both the body and the foot out of the same metal. Mm -hmm. But Charlie Fisk came up with this idea of using lead for the feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of the pipe feet in the organ are made of lead. Mm -hmm. And then make the body out of whatever metal you want to get the sound you want. The, mm -hmm. foot, the foot material does not affect the sound. Mm -hmm. The body material does. Mm -hmm. So since we were after a somewhat bright sound with this swell mixture, we made the bodies out of tin and um, kept the lead for mm -hmm. the feet. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as anything, I will say that making the feet out of lead is an economical issue. Lead is much less expensive than tin. Sure. Tin is extremely expensive. And so if you don't need to make the foot out of it, since it doesn't affect the tone, 
Now, why not use why? a less yeah. expensive metal? As long as you make the lead feet heavy enough so that they can withstand the pipe standing up over centuries. Right. That's important. <laughs> yes. And, and the hammering helps with that. The hammering does make the metal more rigid. It does. So, okay. Um, yeah. We, um, we use a system of tuning um, called tuning slides, and you can see the top of this pipe has been fitted very carefully with an aluminum tuning slide or sleeve mm -hmm. that's fit very tightly to the body. And you tap this up or down to, to shorten or lengthen the body length, and that brings it in tune. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Again, this is D1 or middle D of the two foot rank, and it's a, it's a typical flue pipe, as we say. They're called flue pipes because they have a flue. And the flue is this, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, there's a very narrow slot. And that's referred to as the flue or the windway. Wind enters the pipe at the toe. You can see there's a toe hole there. And it comes up through the foot and is directed through that flue. There's a plate soldered on the top of the foot that covers the entire foot except for this very narrow windway mm. or flueway. Mm -hmm. The wind comes up through the flueway as a sheet, a wind sheet, and it strikes the underside of this upper lip here on the tin body. And as a voicer, I adjust the height of that plate in there, mm. which is called a languid. It's Latin for tongue. <laughs> it doesn't vibrate in this case. <laughs> but you can well imagine that the height of that languid relative to the top of this lower lip will direct the wind sheet further in or further out. And we want that wind sheet aimed perfectly so when it comes up through the windway and strikes the lower edge of the upper lip, it very beautifully sets this column of air inside the tin body into vibrating. Mm. Uh, physicists call this an edge tone generator. Oh, man. And it's a very simple acoustical device. Yeah. But, you know, there and beyond what I just described, there are many variables that you can play with around the mouth area. You can play with the height of this opening at mm -hmm. the mouth. Mm -hmm. And the, in, in general, the higher you cut that opening or cut the pipe up, as we say, the more fundamental, the less bright the tone becomes. But that's also, you also have to keep in mind what the wind pressure mm -hmm. coming into the pipe is. That's one of the determining factors as to the height of that cut up. You can also imagine, I mean, this is a lead foot. I can move this metal very easily. Mm -hmm. So I could, with one of my very tiny spatulas, I could open up the windway to be wider and mm -hmm. let more air through. Mm -hmm. That again would give you a more, um, not only substantial, but a brighter tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The key to voicing, to getting a beautifully voiced pipe is to balance just right the amount of wind entering at the toe, the amount of wind coming up through that flue, and the height of the cut-up. Mm. If you get all those things in just the right balance, you have a beautiful pipe that, that sounds free and not forced, mm. Mm -hmm. but, but a beautiful tone. Mm. And, and that's the idea. That's, that's the key. <laughs> balance is the key to many things, including <laughs> pipe voicing. Indeed. So. That's, that's what I spend my life doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. tremendous. Creating beauty and art for the centuries. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice, yeah. that's a nice vocation for sure. Yeah. So. so this back row of pipes is the new silicial of the great. Beautiful. And you can see it's a, a long row of these pipes with the Franc Harmonique that yes. we just talking about. Same construction, but you can probably also see that it's a bigger scale, that the diameters are bigger relative to the lengths. And that that allows you to get a fuller, just a bigger, stronger tone, which mm -hmm. is appropriate to the great division. Yeah. 
And so now, Homer, you have on your grate the four essential stops for the French fond d'ouïe, or eight-foot foundations. You have a principal, a flute, a harmonic flute, and a string. And so much of the music by César Franck, Vidor, Vierne, Durafle, those French composers, calls for that exact combination of sounds. It's a wonderful thing. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a very important element to that music. Yes. And then, just inboard of this solutional, is the new four-foot open flute mm. on the grade. Everybody does know we're in the expression box of the grape division. Um, so this is an open flute, obviously, cylindrical, hammered lead through and through, heavy hammered lead. Okay. It does have ears, like we saw on the flute celeste pipes upstairs, but I've splayed the ears slightly because I like the tone better. That yeah. That gave. Um, Charlie Fisk would have said it gives you a slightly more naive Oh. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but this is a, a very big scale, a wide scale, but with narrow mouths. Mm -hmm. We think of the mouth width of a pipe as a proportion of the circumference of the pipe. And this particular mouth is a one-fifth circumference mouth. Okay. And you can imagine, before this pipe was made, when it was just a sheet of metal lying flat on the bench, um, before it was rolled up, um, it would be quite easy to, to compute that one-fifth circumference sure. and mark it out and, and, and then uh, scribe the lines for the edges of the mouth. So the, the big scale gives you a nice fullness of tone, the narrow mouth gives you control. Mm. So since it is a flute, we don't want too much sound, yeah. you know, just the right amount. So, yeah, it does have a pretty open toe hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but a very narrow flu way. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, tremendous. Anyhow. How does it sound in here? Beautiful. You can hear when I blow extra hard on it, it overblows cleanly to its octave harmonic, mm. its first harmonic. And yeah. that's... Getting each pipe to do that, that's part a crucial part of the voicing process. Wow. So, for a flute. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yep. So, that's that. I'm going to put it back here. I hope right where I had it. <laughs> the tuning will be right. <laughs>